Hey everyone, I want to do this quick video, a uh, quick video tutorial how to actually, how you can actually use Apico together with uh, Infinite Scroll. So if you have the version 3 from uh, yesterday, and so the update uh, you should be able to see September 21st, 2022. And the Flutter version is 3.0.5. And they actually dropped down, I think they actually dropped down uh, this update today. So it's pretty new, <clears throat> but uh, I had some difficulty, uh, difficulties setting it up and uh, trying to understand how you can uh, set up this uh, functionality but uh, and this video is about uh, showing you how you can do it yourself so this is a brand new project and if you go to uh if you go to apicos <clears throat> uh, we'll use a simple apico and this apico that we're going to use is uh, from uh, coin stats that uh, Actually, Flutterflow, uh, I actually have to say uh, thanks for the Flutterflow Anton uh, who actually helped me uh, setting up this uh, uh, infinite uh, scrolling because I was, uh, as I said, I, it, was, it was hard for me to understand how to do it. Uh, but yeah, basically, if you just open this uh, arrow uh, inside your browser, uh, it will just give you a... Uh, a JSON, um, a JSON data type uh, after that. So uh, what are, so you can put uh, your uh, API arrow uh, and it could be uh, get, it could be post, whatever. Uh, it is your APICO uh, met, uh, method type. And then inside the variables, uh, you can put uh, specifically in this, uh, uh, Apico, you need the queue, which should be the like the query for a searching parameter. So it will be the searching parameter, and you can put the default value, and you can just leave it empty. It doesn't matter. Uh, we can just leave it empty. It doesn't matter really. And then uh, you have the page. So this is one of the most important part here. Uh, you need to have the page. So page will be an integer and it will start from zero. And then the default value can be zero here. And then you have the query parameters. So the query parameters will be the name and then the value will be from variable and the variable, it's the one that you set it up over here so first you set it up the variables and then you set it up the query parameters uh, it's going from right to left like the coding uh like uh, <clears throat> how it's read the code so then you have the page so basically you need to have the same uh, parameters uh so you need the queue and then the page and the page will be again from uh, variable and the variable will be page so if we go to response test, we have the queue and we have the page. So we can just set it to zero over here. And then this is actually the uh, arrow that was created for us. And we can test it and we can click on test. And when you click on test, we get uh, the, uh, the Bitcoin and the uh, coins in general. And if we actually change this to one and read it again, you can see actually uh, that the only thing that is changing here is the price. But this is how the, and not the only one, but one of the things that is changing is the price. But this is how this, uh, uh, this is how this Apico works. So actually you have all, the, for example, all the coins here uh, and then if you change the page, you just get uh, the price change of, I think, with, with the dates, so based on the date. And uh, I don't think that in this case the queue is uh, working because uh, if you have the dog, I will be uh, searching for uh, uh, 
for a client that uh, has docs in his name. Uh, so if I just uh, don't use that, <clears throat> it will just get the same uh, data. So you can see with or without, I'm just getting the same data. Uh, but this is how uh, this app is working. So in theory, you don't need a queue, but we'll enable it and we can just put something over here. And if you enable it or disable it, you can see that if it's get, this is getting no, if it disable it, then now it's getting Q is equal to something over here. So we had the set, you have, well, we had to set up the <clears throat> API call, and then we can go to uh, our page. So our page is called infinite scroll API, and this is the structure of the page. So we have a simple colon and then the list view. And this is the most important part over here. So when we have the list view, we have to go inside the backend query and the backend query should be the Apico and the Apico, you, you can select it. I have only one right now. So it's demo infinity uh, call coin and you need to enable the enable infinity scroll. So when you actually enable infinite scroll, you have an access to some of uh, Flutterflow uh, default values for pagination. So which are next page number, number of loaded items and last response. So if we go over here, we can set this up from uh, some value, for example, local state or wherever we can set up from there or we can use a specific value and I can just write cat or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then the important part is over here, the page. So the page should be coming from, this is a new value. Those are, those three actually are some new values that are only accessible when you enable infinite scrolling. Uh, I was wondering how you can actually uh, access that uh, or put them, where to put them or whatever, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, to do this, you have to actually get the page from variable and then use uh, next page number as a source. So next page number will give you, uh, as it says, the next page number in the loaded uh, query. So in this case, it's a, as it says here, is a zero indexes. So it will st start from zero. So it will be page zero. And when you scroll down, it will automatically in, uh, increase by one. So it will be page one and then page two, page three, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. And then you also have an access uh, to number of loaded items. So if you're uh, if your Apico, for example, have an offset, so it's the same with the page, you can have an offset, for example. So when you have an offset, you can specify how many uh, items you want to get from your Apico. So for example, they, they could be 20 items. So you have, for example, you have an offset equals to 20 and you can get here, it will be an offset so in this case, it will be here, it will be an offset, and this value will be set it up to the number of loaded items. And then you have one more, which is the last response, and this will give you the last loaded page of a pagination apico. So I think this will give you the last number of the page. So for example, if you uh, have uh, page if you reach to page number 50 for example this will actually give you uh, the number 50 so I think this will give you number 50 and this will give you number 51 uh, so this will give you the last one and this will give you the current one so when you're ready with this one when you set up these uh, variables you need to go to uh, generate dynamic children. So when you go to generate dynamic children, you need to have, first you need to set up when you're getting 
uh, what is your item so individual item what is your array uh, when you're going to the JSON where is your array so in this case over here because of my because of this uh, API call uh, it's actually if I test again I'll just show you uh, it's actually all the coins are inside an array named coins so you need to uh, put coins but if I if I, I would try to just go on the bottom of the page so if I get on the bottom of the page you can actually have here you can actually have uh, things like uh, next page previous page so this is actually can can be getting you can get that from um, from the apical from the response of the apical but in this case we're not uh, getting that where all the items are inside the coins so it could be all the items will be uh, like this so it, they will be uh, not inside anything so you can actually check that uh, if you again go to the api call and if i just test it again you uh, have to uh, you, you have to see uh, this bracket so if when you see this bracket uh, you know if it's if it's here so if it's on line one you have this bracket and then you have the curly bracket then you have to use uh, with this only the door sign uh, but uh, if you actually have uh, like this so when you have it like uh, uh, in this example, we have it in coins, so in coins is inside all the uh, coins are inside that coins. So when you access that coins, you, you have access to all the coins. And then here you have a variable, variable name of individual coin. So it would be coin in this case. It could be people here, this would be person, or it could be houses, and this could be house. So this coin over here, we need it. Because when you go to list view and then go to, uh, for example, text, if you want to display some text or an image, but in this case it's a text, we need to go set from variable, click over here, and then get the item, which would be coin item. If we name that person, it would be person item. If we name that to house, it would be house item and so on so forth so when it comes uh, coin yeah we have to get the name so uh, where i'm getting this from i'm getting this from actually over here so this is one coin and we have an access to the id to the icon to the name to the symbol and so on and so forth so we have an access to the name and we can ac also get access to the price change so this is how this is uh, working so when you when you open this inside the page this is what you get and you can see over here the scroller uh, the scroll bar if i go down like uh, right now you can see that the scroller bar will getting smaller and smaller because it's actually loading more data in it and we can have here we can have for example a picture an image it could be over here and then we can have the network the path to the to the image we can get it from uh, again uh, from the icon for example with the coin that we have so if we put it like that and then we this is the test mode that we have so if we click on instant reload we can load the test from over here click on test it's much uh, it's much faster to load it with test than the run mode so i suggest you to run the test inside instead of run mode and also when you change something it's really easy to just click on instant reload and then go to the page and you will see all your things change so that was it for today i hope you learned how to use uh, the infinite uh, scrolling
And there is one hint actually I wanted to talk about the last thing, it's enable pull to refresh. I didn't saw that before actually, and now I see I haven't tested, but you can enable that and you can uh, try if it's working. So that was for today. Uh, thank you very much. And let me know if you want to have more content like this in the future.